Ever since I saw Alien Romulus, I've been um, fascinated with the uh, eyes of those androids that just roll back when they do software updates and uh, stuff like that. There's this cool clip being teased for Predator Badlands that has the scene with an android that gets, uh, there are a bunch of robot arms that heal her face. That would be a bit too involved. But I thought to myself, those arms and the uh, the eyes and the scanning, that should be doable for a, for a little uh, breakdown or a tutorial. Uh, and um, I've created this uh, VFX shot here. And you can see this is the comp, so it's uh, massive. And if I were to make a tutorial about this like I usually do, then uh, this tutorial would be uh, five to six hours long. But what we can do is we can go through the segments. First things first, uh, we have this stock footage clip here of this woman staring in front of her and uh, she's blinking a few times, but she's fairly static, which is nice for us because uh, the androids from Alien and uh, now Predator are mostly static when they go into safe boot or whatever it is. So to get this uh, scene tracked, essentially what I did is that I used a camera tracker here with a uh, magic mask node turned into a bitmap so that it's only tracking inside, right? So that we get this track. This entire thing here is covered in my advanced head tracking tutorial. So uh, just gonna power through. So with these tracking points, we are getting a solve. We're using that to recreate the head in a mesh here. So the way we're doing that is we're taking this point cloud here, using these points to essentially create an image or a um, displacement map for uh, let me just full screen this for this mesh. And then we are projecting the footage back um, on top of it. So um, what this allows us to do is to render it out in a UV unwrap of the mesh. And then you can see she's blinking a few times. So to fix that, I just freeze framed the uh, image and then I masked it like so. And then I went ahead and created some gradients that are based on the uh, color of the eyes. I blur it to make the gradients more smooth and then added some patterns, some veiny patterns. And then you can see this is like before and after. So this is the mask and it's going into the merge. And then um, we had to make a cutout of the eyes. And we did that with this um, same mask here, essentially. So since we freeze frame this image, you just have to draw the mask once to get it to work. You just do it for one frame and it's good to go because uh, you're reprojecting it back on later. We take the eyes and we merge that back on top of the of the white one. And then we were in the middle of the animation. You can see we have two keyframes here. So we are just keyframing that the eyes are going up. And if we turn on motion blur, and that motion blur is in the merge node it's set here to use motion blur. And I just left the quality at two because it's faster, but I changed the shutter angle to 360 to essentially drag the blur out a bit. So you can see here, if we go into this, I don't know if you can see this pattern through YouTube compression, the shutter angle by default is usually 180, but I want to hide this edge here without doing any painting. So I just kind of increase the shutter angle to just like spread that out a bit and it blends much nicer in motion. Then we added some lighting to the eyes. Uh, we also masked the uh, highlights. We just used the original eyes for that. So I kind of drew a mask around the highlights of the uh, eyes. And then we just kind of used that as a mask for the uh, for the color corrector on the eyeballs. And then for the luma gear, just luma keying the face quite harshly uh, and we are multiplying by mask as well uh, and then we are using the same eye mask for that we are luma keying some highlights of the eyes themselves back you can see if we change this you can see we are actually getting a lot of the eyes back so we don't want to see the uh, iris so you know gotta clamp those values so we just get the the highlights there uh, and then we added some more shadow we essentially drew a mask on where the shadow is in the eyes. Did that for both of them. Then color corrected the uh, eyeballs like so. And then we just um, did the same masking there. So add some add some dimension and depth to the, to the eyes there. And then when we have this image, we are um, replacing the material on the mesh 
with this projected footage. This gets uh, fed into the camera track scene, then into a renderer 3D with the uh, cutout like so. And you can see she's not blinking anymore, but it has all of that same camera movement. So, and then you also get the uh, parallax because of the deformed mesh, right? And she's also not blinking. So it's kind of giving us this airy Android vibe. And then we need to add the um, a logo back there. So I don't, I didn't use a uh, Wayland logo. I ended up using a Fusion logo because, you know, why not? So we take this logo. You can see I've already added a mask to it to crop it out. I take this logo, Luma key it, uh, colorize it. So I chose the same color as the Android. So I take this logo on an image plane and I just place it roughly over where the eyes are on the mesh. So it's kind of in this in the same space. So if I just move that again and I view these, you can see we have these two logos where the uh, pupil or pupils of the eyes would be. And then, you know, blur it a little bit. And then we overlay that on top of these uh, blank eyes here. Oh, and uh, I also did this trick where I took these uh, masks here from the UV space, right? And I created another replace material branch here so that we have these masks in 3D space. Uh, and if you watch that through a render 3D, you can see we have the mask animated like that. And then it's just masking it. So we have these eyes going back, which is nice. All right, let's move on. Then we have this um, laser thing. So this is quite a big branch here. I took this mask paint node and uh, I increased the spacing between the um, increased the spacing of the stroke. So like just to get a bit of a pattern and not a straight line, Did some various fast noise effects to it. This has a C the rate of one. And then I took it through a background to give it some color as well. And then I also took these masks here. So this is essentially a rectangle moving uh, and looping. So um, you can see here it's uh, it's just these keyframes, frame zero to five. Select them in the spline editor, right click, set loop, loop. And then just duplicate the mask, offset the frames a bit so that, and do that a few times. And then I mirrored it as well so that it's moving kind of erratic. And then we are masking our um, dotted blue line with these uh, masks so that we are getting this, uh, this uh, almost sideways uh, scanning effect. And then, you know, just uh, get some of the underlying blue line back. Then we duplicate it and we mask it so that we get a, a little grid here, add some glows, and then we add some displays. This is um, just to break off the uh, pattern. Uh, this is simply a stylistic choice. Uh, add some more glows, add some more color correction to uh, break it up a little bit with a fast noise. So the fast noise is essentially masking the uh, the color correction here. This, this is like the main, what do you call it, scan line. So what I did with this is I took this UV image here. This is a freeze frame. I generated a depth map and then I use this to essentially displace the uh, the grid here um, so that it's uh, moving down the face and everything. Oh, and um, the moving is the transform node here with uh, just keyframe animations to just like make it go down the, the face. So you can see it's deforming around what would eventually end up being the nose because of this depth map. Because, you know, we had this face mesh before, which was good enough for um, for uh, generating our uh, UVs, but it's not really, you know, geometry-wise accurate to scanning a face. So we can use it for that. Um, so that's why the depth map came into place instead, because you have a lot more detail here. Of course, you could add post-processing to make it even, even more accurate, but uh, I also found it caused more artifacts in some areas, so I just decided to go with this setting here. And that's that, and then we just take the uh, mesh again, we replace the material with this mesh, and then we render it out, and you have this overlay of a mesh. Then give it some uh, motion blur and then we merge it on top. Now what we do for the merge is that we are taking this um, shot here of our uh, eyes and we are using a linear conversion. 
So um, we are using a gamut node to essentially convert it to linear space. So I just went with from image and then in the merge node, we use a burn in. We slide the burn in all the way to the right. So that way we get a linear color blend essentially. Um, and then when we convert it back into the correct gamut, you can see it's blending really nice. That's the scan line. Then we have this um, huge little bulk. All of this bulk here is essentially the arms. I decided to just do it in Fusion and uh, it turned out to be quite doable. So we have some shape layers here. So I have a rectangle that I've shaped. I'm using this to, to extrude these into geometry. So if you pipe an S ellipse into an extrude node, you can make 3D objects essentially. Uh, but it is limited, so you you wouldn't use this to create a car or anything like that. But you can definitely use it for simpler shapes. So um, this is a small little 3D model I made. So I also did it for a, a huge robotic arm. So uh, let me just show you what's happening here. So we take this shape, we uh, UV unwrap it so it becomes nice to look at. And then we duplicate it. Uh, we make uh, the one duplicate node that essentially creates a smaller one and then the second duplicate node duplicates these two things as a piece and it goes all the way down the line if we merge this over let me just show the uv unwrap as well uv is just set to you know cylindrical if we merge this now we have something looking like a robot arm you can use to um i don't know scan people after the duplicate, we have this bend node that essentially is giving some uh, bending and some life to the uh, to the arm, and I'm adjusting the amount and uh, to just give it some give it some life. I also used a mesh here to essentially just as a proxy. This was uh, more of a reference thing, just so I could place it in 3D space where it's supposed to be. So this is an off branch just for that. But yeah, so we have this transform here. It's uh, going down. It's going down like it should. I figured I should also show you the lighting setup. So, so we are looking from the camera now. So you can see we have one spotlight above. We have one spotlight below. And we've also got an ambient light to just light up the uh, shadows a little bit. So you can see in the... So we have some of this. I also need to show you the um, material for the arms here. I just went with this uh, standard uh, metal texture from Ambient CG. This is packed into a cooked orange node. This is the arm with the texture and the lighting. And to get the shading right, what I did was that I, I uh, lowered the roughness to something like uh, 0 0.25, like so. You can see it didn't do much. So what we have to do is we actually have to uncheck do for now. And now you can see we're getting a lot more shine. I also took this um, freeze frame and I just piped this into a sphere map. Um, and then I piped this sphere map into a reflect node slapped in the middle of this. So the cooked orange is going into the reflect. And you can see the texture before and after. And then if we go back to the result, pipe it into the reflect node and you can see we are getting some some colors from the scene as well which helps sell the shot and then we also can throw some uh, ambient occlusion on there to make it look really nice and then motion blur of course then we also need another arm so for this one we just used the same core arm as uh, as before but we made this little thing at the end here so that's this uh, it's just an ellipse as well, but it's super tiny. And then it's kind of the bevel that does all the work. So the bevel depth does all the all the work there. So and then we merge that together. We UV map it all and everything has the same texture again because we use the replace material. And then we add some bender animations to it. A couple of those to make them compound. Most of this turned out to be off frame. So I don't know how useful it was. So now we have a second arm here with some uh, lighting and uh, ambient occlusion and all that. Then what I did is that I uh, created this um, mask here that essentially loops as well. Make it blue, overlay it on top of our robotic arm, but only use this ambient occlusion pass here and then this luma gear. So this is the only portions of the image that will show the uh, blue gradient. So you can see it's uh, it's a nice thing to simulate data transferring through the through the arm. Some super simple trickery. I think it works really nice. We do some blurring to uh, fix the edges. 
Um, and then also, of course, I did the anti-aliasing trick where I render it out in 4K to resize them later. So um, I also did the gamut, sRGB gamut, and then I resized them to 1080 to fix the uh, anti-aliasing. So I added a defocus to everything within this box. So, you know, this arm here, since it's in the distance, and then I added a lens distortion. The little flashlight is this little thing here. So um, we took this image plane. I essentially made it follow the location of the robotic arms and uh, everything is moving together. I'm keeping them separate for uh, lighting reasons. Like I want this to be an image, uh, not an object that receives lighting. So the image that I'm putting on this object is uh, this little image here. So this is a mask with a color and uh, a quick raise node to just add the uh, volumetric things. Type that into the shape 3D and we have some projected light. And then in the render, you see it looks like this. We defocus it a little bit and then we merge it over our image in this order. And then we add some lens distort to our image just to give it a bit more um, anamorphic look. Overlay our arms over that. We are still in linear space, mind you. Um, and then after everything is merged, we use a gamut node with the output space set to Rec 709 to convert it all back to yeah, Rec 709. So now everything is color matched nicely. Add some grain to uh, add some grain over our super clean CG layers. Then we I can add some color correction to make it look more like the uh, movie. And uh, there you have it. Since I've talked to you last, I've created a Patreon where I'm uploading uh, project files. This project file will be up on that screen um, with one caveat, and that is that I can't share this stock footage. Um, so apologies for that. But anyways, the project file without the clip will be up on the Patreon. If you decide to uh, become a member there, I would highly appreciate it. It would help me out a lot. So uh, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, do we call it a tutorial or do we call it a breakdown? Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, see you in the next one.